Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Lyon, uh, in light of the budget deficit, uh, the tax gap is a major concern for the federal government and has received uh, a lot of attention, increased attention, given the budget deficit. One of the drivers of the gap is the increasing complexity. Who would uh, updating the tax code potentially uh, reduce the tax gap? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, there are, uh, the, the actual studies haven't been able to determine whether uh, complexity uh, drives noncompliance if it's if it's a lack of understanding. Uh, I think there's a lot of common sense that um, uh, when it uh, takes uh, more time to compute your taxes, uh, businesses that have many other valuable things to do with their, their scarce time and resources uh, may find it more valuable to generate income instead of devoting resources uh, to the compliance costs. And uh, so I do think uh, as we simplify the tax laws uh, and especially uh, lower rates, it makes it much easier, less painful uh, to report income and uh, the, the tax gap would go down. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. Hobbs. Um, I, I think that there is, there is no tax code simplification that could ever cure the tax gap when it comes to simply Unre not reporting the income that everyone knows should be reported. And uh, sadly, uh, for the small business owners, sadly, the evidence is irrefutable that when you have increased reporting, you have increased compliance. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I would say, based upon my experience in practice and just dealing with my, uh, with my neighbors, is that when there is a perception that the tax code is extraordinarily complex and un unfairly favors uh, one, some groups over the other, that people are less enthused, even less enthused, about paying the taxes that they should, they should pay. So I think that the tax code, in some cases, contributes directly to the tax gap by, with its complexity, and certainly in other cases, indirectly to the tax gap. Thank you. Would the gentlelady yield? Sure. Yes, I thank the gentlelady for yielding. I, this, uh, the term, the tax gap, was one that sort of came up a few years ago. Uh, and, and some, certainly not the, the chairwoman, because she does everything right. But some people uh, have used that term. Make sure that is reflected <laughs> for the record. In the record. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but some people, I think, have used that term because they think that, you know, the problem is Congress has been spending this much and we've been taxing this much, so we're spending more than we take in. So there's sort of this idea out there that there's a, there's a gap between what we spend and what we, what we bring in the taxes. And some people aren't paying their fair share of the taxes. If we just get them, we can keep spending this extraordinary amount of money that we're spending up here. And, and the bottom line is we just spend too much in Congress. That's been true under Democratic control now, and it was true certainly when Republicans were in control as well. So uh, it's just a term that sort of has political implications that, that uh, um, I don't, you know, and certainly those that aren't paying their taxes and, and are, aren't being fair to those that are, but I think the IRS and others try as hard as they can to, to make people comply with the tax code, and I just wouldn't want to leave that impression out there that all we have to do is try harder or, or simplify the code, which I do think we ought to simplify, but then we'll have more money, then we can keep spending all this exorbitant money. You know, it's, we need to get a control of spending. But. Yeah, it really grew during <laughs> this last eight years. Anyway, um, <laughs> any other questions? Including this, this eighth year, too. So I have no other questions. Okay, so let me uh, take this opportunity again to thank all of you for uh, your participation and insights. Um, and we will continue to work uh, today. We released uh, this report that I will encourage you to read and to make any comments that you might want. And I ask unanimous consent that members will have five days to submit a statement and supportive materials for the record without objection. So order this hearing is now adjourned.